World Health Organization has just declared uh, a global uh, coronavirus. It is a pandemic. New containment measures this morning after witnessing a surge of new infections. There are now more than 2,000. Good evening, everyone. Americans getting mixed messages tonight at a time we can ill afford it. COVID cases are exploding, doubling. A quarter of the world's population is now living under some form of lockdown due to coronavirus. More than the U.S. is now the world's epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic, and cases continue to multiply there. Tonight, North there Dakota are... first responders say they are taking the necessary precautions for a potential coronavirus outbreak. Thank yeah. you, Kurt. Governor Doug Burgum is reminding North Dakotans to stay vigilant and continue practicing social distancing. Essentially, the function of our organization is to invite people to our community. You know, the first time that I uh, paid attention, I should say, to the coronavirus, because, you know, I heard about it, you hear about it, but so much of what happens in news is you don't necessarily pay attention to it until you um, understand how it, how it may impact you, right? Or you can relate to it in some level. So I have to admit and say that uh, North Dakota naive was had kicked in a little bit. And then, of course, as time went, you started to quickly realize this is a factor. You know, when, when it hit, um, it did kind of feel like it, it hit quickly. There's no doubt that we, you know, when you look around and see all of the, our community looking very different because uh, we're a vibrant community. Minot is a vibrant, active community. And um, that, that has definitely changed. We can't invite people to our community right now. So what we did is um, we are now talking to people in our community and, and trying to provide some tools for them for how they can support our local businesses. Um, what can they do to help make a difference for some of the businesses that are struggling and, and trying their best to survive? You know, I believe um, Minot will come out stronger than before. Um, Minot has been through this really tough situations before, and we're a gritty community. Uh, we know how to rise up. And so when the storm passes, which it will, um, I think this community will come together like it always has. As a senior pastor, of course, I'm responsible for the spiritual needs of our congregation to helping them grow in their discipleship, uh, responsible for worship, uh, messages, pastoral care, uh, just the whole cadre that goes with being a pastor. It seems like whatever comes up is, is a pastor's job, including crises. I would say I was starting to hear it on the news media. Uh, here and there, a little bit here about how bad it was in China. I mean, the Wuhan market and, and, and those kind of things, how it was spreading all over. And like most people, I just said, eh, it's, I feel bad for the folks in China. I hope they get it under containment, but didn't really have any um, great concern about it going any further than that. Um, and I kind of thought, you know, initially that we're in mine at North Dakota. Uh, how is this really going to affect all of us? But when it came close to home and all of a sudden WHO, World Health Organization, said this is a pandemic and we have pastored in the midst of a crisis before. Uh, many of you know the 2011 flood that happened in here was a crisis in our community. The number of people affected and, and the financial impact and the disruption in church services and all those things that went with it. So, uh, different crisis but still a crisis. The big response had to be when both the president issued the 10 or less people gathering together, uh, and then our governor, Governor Burgum, saying the same thing, this social, this new term that's new to all of us called social distancing. Uh, wow, that has been a game changer because that changes everything we do in a church. One of the things I miss most in the church now because we are practicing social distancing is that the communication face to face with our people. That's something that, talking with the pastor just this morning on Zoom, local pastors, we're all grieving over not being able to see our people face to face like we do every Sunday. 
And uh, we don't have services in our sanctuary right now. We have what we call an online service. We pre-record our services uh, on both Facebook Live and then upload it to YouTube. And so we've gone totally digital. Even though we're in uncharted waters, um, we are learning how to do and be the church in a different context. And the different context is digitally. And if you would look at our church services prior to having to social distance, you would come to, and our main product, our worship service, was done to a live audience. And our secondary product was live streaming. And so we weren't geared so much toward the live streaming. We thought it was necessary, it was found it a good piece, but that wasn't our main product. Our main product was the in-person experience. Well, now we've had to gear that to our main product being our digital experience. And so that's the different thing. The, the biggest way that people can access all of our services is through our website, www.ecominot.org. Once you go there, you can see watch services online, watch recorded services. You can connect to YouTube or connect to Facebook, either one. We do have a Facebook page too, and I can't even remember that, but you can connect on that through going online through our website. Included on the website is our, our updated statement about the, about the COVID-19 response to it. Yeah, even though the, uh, the scripture says that uh, there are gonna be famines and earthquakes and wars and rumors of wars and, and uh, pandemics, all these kind of things, we should expect those because in this world, we're gonna have troubles. As long as this world exists, there's gonna be troubles. But Jesus also followed that up with, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. And he will continue to be at work in your lives. Your hope is not in the circumstances, the situations. Our hope is in the God who's more than enough to meet every single need that we have. Well, we heard about the coronavirus initially just sitting around the kitchen table. Um, my husband reads the news pretty religiously and he'd been following the, the China piece. And so um, when we first had our, uh, the first case in the United States, you know, he read that on the news and, and we were just sitting around talking about it and the eyebrows were going up and the question marks started happening, but it wasn't a super high concern at that time. Well, when, when Corona first hit the United States, we were, we were concerned. We didn't really know how it was gonna affect our business. Um, we had heard the things that they were doing in China and Italy, shutting businesses down, things like that. And, and of course we were concerned about that. Um, but we thought, well, maybe this is kind of far away, maybe a month or, month or two down the line, we'll have to worry about this. Um, but we've, we've been watching it daily and it is, it grows very fast and it was, it was very quickly a concern. When the governor announced on Thursday that he wanted all recreational businesses to close, that was a hard day. Um, there were some tears and some, lots of anxiety. You know, we're only two and a half years old, so for us to shut down like that is extraordinarily damaging. Well, for us, you know, we run on contracts. So um, about two thirds of our business is contract based and the other third of our business is massage therapy. So we've lost, um, of the massage therapy revenue, we've lost about 75%, which is a lot. Um, luckily, most of our contracts are staying with us. They're um, very supportive and they, we're family. And unless there's been like an income loss or something like that, um, our clients are, they're so awesome to, to just stay with us. They're not canceling contracts and that's gonna keep us afloat for at least a couple months. Um, I think we're all gonna struggle in our own ways, but lucky for us, North Dakota is a wonderful state to live in during times of crisis. Um, it's amazing how supportive North Dakota people are toward each other, farmers. I mean, we're hardworking people and I think that's, that's gonna be a, a gift for us, I think. Well, if you're still gonna spend money, spend money on small business. You know, really try to support those small business, local old restaurants, flower shops, um, bakeries, things like that. Not your typical chain store, but your, your small businesses. We, we need you at this time. We wanted to build a business where our members were family, and we have done that. And our members are acting like family, functional families. 
right? <laughs> we are getting so much support from, from them and, and that's what we wanted and, and that's what we have. So for future members, we'll be not treated any differently than that. We welcome people to come in to our Spectrum family and you'll be treated as family. And when this is all over, you know, we're gonna make it right with people. We're already giving, you know, in-store credits and things like that for people to come in and shop and, and um, you know, trying to prorate without having everyone at one time, you know, those kinds of things. We'll, we'll make it right. We just need to do it in chunks. I was at home sitting on my couch and, you know, listening to the news and, and I was just shocked. You know, I just thought my world ended, but, uh, you know, we're going to pick up pieces and we're going to move forward. Uh, this is a magic city and we're going to be strong and we're going to get through this and we'll, we'll pre prevail. Um, I have great people that work for me and I need to retain them people any way that I can. You know, a lot of the regulars we, you know, they're coming in getting orders to go and just checking in and it's always nice to see a smile or a happy face or a face that you know I can relate to or the staff can relate to and it's just a warm feeling when that happens when somebody you know comes in and gets something to go or calls and checks on you and you know there's a lot of loyal 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 people in the in the community and it's it's heartwarming. It, it's been a big drop, but you know what? We'll get through it. We've, we'll, we'll fight through it. We'll, we'll get through it. You know, we'll, people will, you know, when this is over, we'll, we'll be here to service whoever wants to come in and find it's uh, resilient and we'll, we'll prevail. You know, once the flood hit, it, that was devastating to us too. I mean, I looked out the window and all I see is water over the valley. Um, I'm up higher, you know, so, but man, it was just, all I could watch is cars on the highway going by the restaurant and backed up for miles because, you know, you couldn't get north and south, you could get east and west, and it was, it was just devastating. The difference with that though, people could still go into restaurants and eat. We had to use paper plates and stuff, but, you know, it was still heartwarming seeing people come into the restaurant where now it's just an eerie feeling. You know, I look behind me and there's nobody in the restaurant for days, you know, and it's, you know, 2020 is a magic year. Um, we'll, we will get through this. Um, it's, like I said, Minot is resilient and we will power through this. And I think we're gonna come back stronger as a community, everybody seems to be, you know, working together and, you know, we're, we're moving in the right direction. Uh, my name is Rob Fuller. I own Spartan Firearms Indoor Range and Gun Store here in Minot. We sell retail, we're a retail store for firearms, uh, ammunition, hunting equipment and tactical gear. Uh, we also are getting ready to open our 12 lane indoor range. Uh, I think I first heard about the COVID-19 um, virus that's been going around about three months ago. I believe they started talking about it on the news. Obviously, we watch a lot of news being a, a firearms retailer. You know, I think, I think a guy has a couple different reactions. First, you're like, what the heck is going on? You know, what's realistic? What isn't realistic that they're talking about? That sort of thing. And then I think you kind of come back and you're like, well, some of this seems sensationalized to me by the media. You know, as a firearms dealer, you get worried because obviously my livelihood is my business being open. If they shut everything down um, and we're unable to be open, uh, it's kind of tough on a business. And then we're seeing that with a lot of other businesses throughout Minot in the state right now. Uh, it's been a skyrocket for our business, uh, it, uh, quite honestly. I mean, um, as this goes on, and I think the media sensationalizes it more and more, people get scared. Um, you know, people are, we hear we're worried about looting, we're worried about um, weird things going on and so they want to be able to protect themselves and their family. Well, what I noticed compared to other areas of the country, I think the bigger areas on the coast, the west coast, the east coast, um, they have this fear uh, and maybe it's because they're not as well educated to some things as we are around here. I don't see that fear and panic around here. I do see people um, 
obviously stocking up a little bit on ammunition, buying a new gun, this or that. We've seen people that have never been firearms owners all of a sudden want to own firearms. And so, I mean, it's, um, but I, I, I think it's different here than it is in the bigger cities. But this is affecting business owners more than it's just affecting everybody. Um, the businesses that aren't open, the people that are losing revenue, um, you know, some of those businesses aren't going to make it and the people that work for them are going to lose jobs. And so, I mean, um, I, I think personally, I think the governor and the city so far have done okay by not mandating a close down. I know, you know, restaurants and, and different things are forced to carry out only, um, but I think they got to get back to normal because it's going to hurt the small business owners around here. Uh, the new building hasn't been affected. The new uh, range hasn't been affected at all. Um, we are a little bit concerned here and there that if they, anybody says shut down, you know, the contractors might not be able to come out and finish their work. But we're also not in the city limits. We're outside in the county. So as of yet, we have no mandates on us whatsoever. When you talk to the small business owners, there's a lot of concern, um, not only for their livelihoods, but for the people that work for them and, and the other considerations. Um, but I hopefully the community rallies around those businesses that are able to stay and um, carries them all forward. I do watch public television news and I briefly have it on and I do know they were mentioning something about Europe and then also China having some major issues. I mean, it went from China and being in a trade war now into being really sick, which didn't make sense to me. And I kind of heard a few things in and out. And the next thing I heard that they were basically in trouble. And I'm like, how is China in trouble? And so I kind of perked up a little bit and listened to it. But I figured, okay, it's over there. I don't know what that's about. I'm not gonna really focus on it because I don't have the time. Put it this way, I'm from Miami originally. So when I found out that Miami was having issues, um, I didn't doubt that. I mean, they have a huge cruise industry. They also have a lot of travel in and out international. So I figured, okay, any of those major cities is gonna be a major problem. And I lived in New York City too at some point. So that really scared me because I know how close people are in proximity. Miami is a little bit more spread out. So I knew that there's different dynamics happening. But when I thought about where I was located, I mean, if you look at the map, we are so far away from any major border except Canada, but it's all landlocked that unless there was something coming from Canada down here, I wasn't really highly concerned. It was probably around the time when I started getting emails from the chamber, Minot Chamber, and then also um, on the PBS stations, they were talking about how cities were starting to close down and restaurants, and I heard when New York closed down, that was a really big concern, because I said, if it's gonna happen out there, it's gonna probably move inward. Well, my business model's a little different. I don't usually do delivery, and people have been wanting it for years. And it was a really difficult thing for me to consider because that was really gonna be the only way for me to make business or even keep business going when I found out we had to actually close dine-in. Oh, I would say, gosh, at least 65, 75%. And I think one of the things I realized when this was starting to trickle into us, when we were finally gonna get that call from our governor, that I had to make a quick decision. How could I allocate my employees to be here with what we needed to get done and accomplished, but also how can I make sure everyone's making some money? And so I had to actually physically redo the schedule right away and then make sure that I can get all the information out to customers saying what we can do. Minot has the capability and the potential to really be a leader in North Dakota as a forefront city because we have those aspects where we have people from all over the world that come here. We also have a great university that brings unique attitudes and ideas. So I always say to people, it's not great now, but it's getting better all the time. And I have seen it. It's gonna, you know, swing back like a rubber band. The first thought was to listen to news reports and wondering how the virus was spreading and how the response from our local and state government leaders would affect what we do here at the Children's Music Academy. So when the public schools closed, we also closed to having classes. And then we began to, to look to find ways to be able to provide our music education to the children and to the families without having them directly in the classroom with us. And so we went to a program called Zoom, and I'm sure a lot of businesses and organizations are using that program. 
but we've been using that effectively now for a week, teaching classes utilizing the Zoom platform. So moms and dads and boys and girls are in their homes and our teachers are in the studio teaching to them, providing the music education. I think North Dakotans by and large are a part of an independent and uh, wonderfully resilient people. I, you'll see as you go along Main Street, you'll see curbside pickup for the small local restaurants. Um, you'll see people who are supporting the, the local shops. So it is uh, not just a downtown effort, but it is a community effort because our community recognizes how important these local businesses are to our economy. What I'd like to say to the Minot community is we got this. You know what, Minot? We got our name Magic City for a reason. It's earned. We, the folks at, at Cornerstone Presbyterian Church, would love to walk alongside you. Minot is a magic city. You guys keep doing what you're doing. Be strong. Hang in there. We'll get through it together. From homesteaders here in Minot, North Dakota, I just want to wish everybody happy times and walk around with a smile on your face. We'll get through it. Minot is the magic city. Um, it's a resilient city and a resilient community. We've been through many things together. Uh, this is just one more thing and it'll pass. Uh, we're Spartan Firearms is here to support the community in any way we can. If there's anything anybody needs, just let us know. I want to say thank you, Minot, for supporting Magic City Hoagies through this trying time, but I know we're going to get through this, and that's why we're the Magic City. Keep up the good work. For my children and my family, uh, Children's Music Academy, for my teachers, um, every one of you is a part of the magic that makes Minot special.